Okay, so welcome back. This is part three of my Cosmic Cycle series. Um, talking a little bit about astrology and astronomy and ancient cycles and teachings and so on. And I was talking about how, what if at this galactic core or galactic equator, ecliptic or whatever, there was a stream of a particular type of energy, like you see these bands around the galaxy, and maybe one of these gal bands is one type of frequency or type, and another band, and then there's another band. And then as we go through these cycles that we get, we cross a certain point again and again and again, and that the Earth gets affected, the Sun and the Earth get, you might say, initiated, or their vibration gets intensified at different points. And all the life on the planet gets intensified. Now, if the stream of energy that goes into our system could elevate increase the basic energy in the entire solar system and naturally the solar system has to distribute that energy out through its own circling objects and the earth would come into that and it actually may affect it may end up it could end up changing the orbit slightly of all the other planets in our system because of a synchronous effect because the scale of this is enormous when you have one type of energy which may be focused as focused as deep as maybe like a laser pure pure unbelievable special type of exotic rays beams or materials you might say that are streaming into the system now get distributed and can harmonize or disharmonize in the case may be but generally tend to stabilize or disturb in some way, at least very least change the patterns of the planetary or planetary spin around our sun. So now again in this spin around here there could be like other galaxies in another galaxy and then another planet or something else so that in this big cosmic spin all the way around the galaxy over thousands and thousands and thousands of years our Sun can get closer to other types of objects other types of material other planets and this is a long long time hundred thousand years now there are some theories again you know I'm going to quote Zechariah Sitchin, which I've read a lot of, and you know, he may not have had it all right, but he certainly has a really good presentation and makes a good argument. We're missing some information, in my belief, we're really missing some information about what happened in some of these other cycles. What happened before the Grand Canyon? Just you know, if you look at some of the things on Earth where absolute cataclysm is evident. Huge! Something that we can't conceive of right now. I'm talking about just like we know what happened. The scientists know this happened. They, they extinguished a lot of the big mammals and very narrowly back around 70,000 BC there was like a huge volcano that happened in Mount Toba and um, down in Malaysia, Indonesia area and this is the kind of stuff that you know we might be living in the middle of something and we're damn lucky that we have some clues here if we don't pay attention to the Mayan calendar and some of the Egyptian and some of these other calculations for the Hindus and try to get our wits about ourselves to understand look you know that's why they watched the stars for thousands and thousands and thousands of years because they had a reason there was a good reason I'm talking about some of these cycles and now as far as specifically what I think could happen I mean it's clear to me that there's definitely a lot of light pouring into our uh, consciousness there's an awful lot going on it's stimulating all the worst and all the best 
there's more energy coming into the system. And, I mean, there are people, I mean, you know, when, when things get hot, you know, when you cook, I guess, you cook and you kind of reduce something, and then you get rid of all the crap or stuff you don't want, and then what do you have left is something that you're going to eat, and it's going to be tasty. Now, it seems like what happens is the planet goes through these cycles. I mean, it just, like, gets, you know, like, cosmic alchemy. It gets goes through these, like, crushing systems where there are volcanic eruptions and just just absolutely floods and massive destructive scenarios that are related physically to the earth itself and we're riding on an elephant's back here we're sitting on this let's say like a flea you know you, the flea's sitting on an elephant's back and it's only been there its lifespan is maybe a couple of days and it's been there half its life already and all of a sudden the elephant gets up and starts walking around the flea's saying hey what's going on my whole world is changing you know well yeah because that's, we don't live very long. So if things start to change right beneath our feet, well, we just have to be living that time, you know, that, you know, we're all along for the ride. Now, another thing to remember here, you do this kind of perihelion thing, where, you know, when, when something in orbit is going closer to the center where, it, like, it's circulating around, there's generally some sort of elliptical orbit where... It goes out here, goes slow, 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 and then goes faster, 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 and goes whips and round, and then comes back out. So, the Hindus had cycles where the ages were like, the Golden Age lasted a really long time, and then the Silver Age, and that lasted quite a very long time, and then there was the Copper Age, or whatever, and then there was the Iron Age, and basically that, you know, the whole idea is that you know, the farther away you get away from the light, it gets darker and darker and darker. And then, you know, there's less energy and then it gets faster and faster. Now, the question is, is the enlightened age, when it's crossing the ecliptic, when everybody's like hot, heated up, or is the enlightened age after everybody's cooled down a bit? You know? So, I find this all very, very interesting, and I encourage uh, people, I've written a, a website on, about time uh, blog, and I have a number of other uh, segments here about time, and I'm going to be making a, a longer series about astrology, and I have a very interesting uh, group of recordings about energy and how it operates and so on. I'd encourage people to look around. I'm very open to correspondence from people. I really like getting email. I look at other people's websites. I go and I listen. And I credit a lot of the things that I've learned from many of the people around the world who are doing research and putting their results of their research online. And I read a lot of books. And I also travel and talk to as many people as I can. So... Thanks for watching this segment about cosmic cycles and...